this tutorial. Today I will begin using the command line interface, but before I do, let me just share a few things with you from my own personal experiences with the command line. First of all, it can seem a little bit complicated, especially to Windows users, and in the beginning it might seem like you will never be able to learn it or something of a kind but believe me that is not the case thousands of people millions of people have learned it before you who had the exact same mindset I don't want you to worry about that if it seems complicated or if you make mistakes or if something doesn't work immediately don't worry about it it happens to everybody most important of all do not get frustrated by it if you do get up go make a cup of coffee, drink a cup of water, go for a walk, whatever, make a five minute break, uh, whatever uh, calms you down, do it because if you are frustrated you won't be able to do it, you won't be able to do much, I guarantee it to you. Anyway, if you just stick with it, by the end of this course you will master the Linux command line and you will successfully uh, be able to use Red Hat without any problems, you will have full knowledge uh, of, the com of the terminal in Red Hat and you will command it to the fullest of extents. You will be able to do whatever you want with it without any bigger difficulties. But as I said, if there are problems along the way, and there will be problems along the way, if you encounter bumps, uh, don't stop. Just stick with it and eventually you will figure it out of that, I assure you. It is not as complicated as it seems. It's very simple, straightforward, no problems. Anyway, that being said, let's just go ahead and click on application, move on down to utilities, scroll to the bottom, and there is a terminal icon here. We're just going to go ahead and click it. Excellent. So I have already changed my terminal here to an extent. But if you just go ahead and click on edit and you say profile preferences, here you can do here you can customize it to a good extent. So I have my pro there are just a few things that you need to customize here. Other than that, you can just leave as it is. So profile name, it's random guy. That's my username for this account. So I have changed the profile name to run random guy. It will probably be by default untitled or something of a kind, but even if you don't change it, it won't make any significant differences. Down below, this will be ticked, so use system fixed with font, and if you untick this, you will be able to select a custom font for you, and you will be also be able to configure the font size, which is very nice. So if I say 20, this is going to get even bigger. I'm probably going to say 22 for the purposes of this tutorial. I, I generally wouldn't use it, but I want you to be able to see everything that goes on here. Down below you have the cursor shape. So just take a look at the terminal in behind at the top and see how the block changes to an I-beam and then how it changes to an underline. I personally like to use a block. You can use either of the three, which any of the three, whichever suits your needs or preferences. You can also configure the default terminal size. Uh, you can resize it basically now to anything you want with an arrow with your mouse. However, this default terminal size refers to the f every time you open up a terminal. What size do you want it to be then? But after you have opened it up, you can change it to whatever you want. Anyway, the next thing that I want to configure is colors. So under colors, you can say what sort of scheme do you want? It says use colors from the system theme. Do we want that? No, I do not want that. Okay, I generally choose blue on black. For this particular tutorial, I've chosen green on black. I think you'll be able to see things a lot better that way. Uh, but you can choose whatever you want. So you'll look. Uh, here you have text color. You can choose your text color to be anything. It can be yellow or whatever this color is. And look, it changes in the background, no problems. It can be. Uh, is this crimson or red? Ah, this is red. Okay, so, oops, I just changed the color plate, sorry. Let's just put it red here. And you can see that it immediately changes. But I'm just going to go ahead and select, was it this green or this green? Select, yep, it was this one. Excellent, so I'm just going to go ahead and select this one here. Okay, so bold color. 
No, I don't want bold color to be that, sorry. We'll just cancel same as the text color. Don't 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 alter that. I thought for a moment it was something different. So the bold color is basically bold letters. What sort of uh, what sort of color do you want for that kind of text or something of a kind, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, down below you have built-in schemes, so you can, I don't know, use different ones. There's like the Linux console or, I don't know, Tango, I've honestly never used that one, or Xterm. I don't know, I really wouldn't use that one either. You have the color plate down here, which you can play around with if you want, but there really there really is no literally no need for you to do that. You can just say custom and then choose whatever you want. But there is not even a need to play with palette at all. You can change color of different things there, but no need. You're just gonna confuse yourselves. Rather instead just change the text color and the background color to whatever suits you. I would personally recommend that you change it to something that is suiting for your eyes. Anyway, do we have anything here? Okay, yes, the scroll bar. How many lines do you want to be able to scroll back to? This is a pretty good thing, actually. It might not seem important or something of a kind, but more often than not, you will want to scroll back and you will want to see that you, what have you done or what has been done. So it's not a bad to keep this number high. I think 8192 is plenty, so there's no need to change that. But sometimes it's a good idea to click on unlimited, although all these things cost resources. Compatibility. Okay, so no need to change anything actually here. By default, this is all fine. Title and command, this is all also fine. You can run some additional scripts or something of a kind. The custom made says run a custom command instead of my shell. Don't change that. Just leave it as it is. There is not, there's no real reason to change anything here we will be changing things in the terminal anyway. If you want something to run on boot up, we will place it in the cron job, in the cron tab, and there things will run. You don't need to put anything here or anything of a kind. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and close this. Uh, expand the terminal across the board, and I'm gonna switch to full screen. Okay, so capture. Okay, there we go. So it's across the full, it's across the whole screen, and now we can begin with some basic concepts. So first of all, let me introduce you to the CD command. See, CD it stands for Change Directory. With it, you are able to navigate the file system. In a sense, I can now CD to home. You can type in two letters, two, three letters, or even one, and then press tab to complete it. Here, observe. You can type in cd, slash stands for root. So this is the root of the directory. You can see that uh, this part here has changed from this to this. Excellent. So if, as I said, if I type in cd, space, slash, and I type in h, tab, it immediately completes and it says it's home. It knows how to go there. And then inside of home I have my username which is random guy. I can just type in R and then press tab again and it's gonna auto complete the whole command. So sometimes you need to type in more than one uh, letter or press tab twice. There you go. So it completed just go ahead and clear that. So CD. If I slash home, it's going to complete, and if I even don't type anything in here, because there's only one possibility, if I press tab, it's going to finish, and it's going to type in random guy, the username, and if I type in tab again, nothing's going to happen, but if I type it twice really fast, actually I've typed it in thrice here, but it doesn't really matter, you are able to see from here, you see this is the command, I've typed in tab twice, tab, tw tab twice, and now I got a list of possible uh, folders that I could navigate to, directories actually, that I could navigate to. Very simple, and if I type in capital T, that's for templates. Is there anything else with a T? Nope, there is, okay, let's use the P. So there are two things with P as far as I can see, it's pictures and public. If I type in tab, nothing, but if I type it uh, again, it's pictures and public. So it gives me the two possibilities. 
very easy way of navigating through the entire file system, but you might ask yourselves, how does he know where to go? That's a pretty good question, actually. And we use the we use our pre-existing knowledge, of course, but we also use another set, another command which help us helps us navigate and figure out where we are at the moment. Now, before I go into that, there is this command which I've used previously. It's uh, it's called clear. It's spelled like this. And if you type it into the terminal, it's going to clear pretty much everything that is there. You see, I, ju I just typed in clear, and it literally does what it says. What the, what the name says it does. It clears the screen completely, it clears the terminal. Quite in handy, very helpful to stay neat, stay uh, in focus with what you are doing at the moment. Now, there is this command, ls, and if I press it, you see it lists the, if I just type in ls without adding any arguments of whatsoever, it's going to list all the folders and all the files and it's going to list pretty much everything within my current working directory uh, it's not going to give me the hidden files but you don't really need those at the moment I will explain shortly what those are and how you can see them but if I just type in ls it's going to show me everything in my current working directory so if, for example if I want to go to boot, dev, bin, etsy, home, lib, whatever I would type in cd space Etsy, press enter, and then I would type in ls again, and you see I have a whole ton load of, of files here, folders, uh, files here, directories, and so on and so forth. I have a lot of stuff here in general. So let's just go ahead and clear. You will too. But there is another key thing with this uh, cd command. Actually, there are a few shortcuts that you can use, and there is one key thing. So let's just go back to root directory. To go back to root directory, you just type in cd space slash. Uh, this, this is pretty much the same concept that is uh, on Unix, Linux type systems. That also is the same concept that works on a BSD or on Mac. The only operating system that this concept is not valid. Uh, the, the command cd is, but the concept of a slash is not on Windows. So Windows machines would use something like this, a backslash. This would be uh, this would be their point of reference. This would be how they would navigate. Backslash, so you would say, I don't know, program uh, files, and then backslash, I don't know, uh, something here. Something, and then again, random stuff. Anyway, this is how they would navigate. This is how you would navigate in Windows with backslashes and then uh, typing in the whole path. Also, the tab option that I've showed you a moment ago works a bit differently there as well. Let's just go ahead and clear the screen and see. Oops, I don't need to because you can also see where you are here. It's going to tell you generally uh, where you are in this section that I have selected now. So slash just represents root. But look at this. I can cd to home, and let's say I'm in home, and let's say that I want to go exactly, actually let's go to random guy, and then clear, and let's say I want to go exactly one step, one step backwards. How would you do that? You, you don't want to type in cd, and then root, and then home, and then you would go back there. Okay, in this particular example it's relatively simple, but you could be somewhere deep in the file structure, and to type this path in again can be a bit tedious. Just to go one step backward, it's not very practical. So, uh, symbol for the previous directory is dot dot. If I type in dot dot, I'm going to go back one directory. I can go back again, so cd dot dot. See, I'm going backwards. Uh, the current directory is cd uh, dot. Well, there wouldn't be a point type in cd dot, but the markation for the current directory is a dot. Anyway, another thing that you can type in is after you have cleared uh, is pwd print working directory. So if I press enter, okay, so it's root. If I cd home, pwd, I'm in home now. So clear, cd random guy, clear, uh, pwd, I am in home, ran, root home random guy. 
Excellent. So if I type in CD dot dot and again PWD, you can see that this path here, that this, uh, not path, but this uh, current working, di working directory is different from this one. It's different by exactly one single step here. And that is the dot dot, which signifies the previous working directory. Simple as that, you go forward, you go backward, you go forward, you go backward. Very simple to navigate. There'll be a few more things uh, in regard to the CD command in the follow-up tutorial, as this will be a mini-series within this uh, course, where we shall learn the basics of the terminal, how to use it, what commands you need on your day, what, command, what, what basic commands and more advanced commands, and stuff of a kind, and then later on we will get into the actual stuff that you will need for the Red Hat Certified Administrator exam, but you cannot really do any of those things without learning these fundamental basics. Anyway, I bid you farewell and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.